I want to give you a warm welcome also from my side and I'm really lucky to see that you're still attending me, my, my, my talk also that late today. And today I want to present you some insights of one of our most interesting projects since the last seven years. Um, for us, it was a kind of role model for the use of Modelica models as an integral part of the des uh, building design process. And to um, okay, um, to show you why it was not an, an easy way to go and not an easy approach, um, you may have to um, have some insights in the requirements and step of steps of the building design process at all. Um, the building design process is an interdisciplinary engineering process, and it needs. Um, therefore interdisciplinary models for the simulation. And that's why Modelica is predestinated to be used for it. Um, the total process consists of three phases, including nine steps, which are divided into um, phase one, which includes the actual planning phase. Then we have uh, the design phase. And then we have from uh, part, uh, part four to part seven, um, the planning phase, which with the implementation of the planning documents and the parts or steps P8 to P9 actually define the construction phase. Um, each phase um, sets up different requirements on required models and also on the availability of data. On the other hand, we have also different requirements on the acceptable accuracy of the different models. Um, as you can imagine, uh, the accuracy uh, have to be, has to be improved all the time during the whole process. And also the availability of, of data improves during this process. Um, the uh, the same time, um, the general effort in the individual process steps um, is not the same all the time. Um, the main focus of work should be in the beginning at the final design stage, at the detailed design stage, and at the end at the actual construction during the pH stage. Um, if we look at the whole uh, process, we see at least a, a number of different application scenarios for Modelica models. Uh, in the early design stages in P2, we can do with the Modelica model some variance analysis to compare different system solutions. In P3, we can um, contribute to different design and layout decisions. In the um, phase P5, um, there is the final planning of the controls systems. And also in this stage, the Modelica models can contribute to. And also after the building has been finally implemented, there are some, some significant opportunities to use models, for example, for commissioning support and the evaluation and optimization. So, um, now, sorry. Uh, now I want to present you the actual um, example. Uh, example building we've been accompanying uh, since the last um, seven years with our models, uh, model and simulation services. It is the research greenhouse in Leipzig in, in Eastern Germany. Um, it is a greenhouse which should be used by the University of Leipzig for um, biologically, uh, biological diversity analysis. And at the beginning, the building owner, uh, the sta uh, um, state of Saxony, um, wanted to reach the main goal that there should be a 50% less CO2 emission than any um, normal reference greenhouse building. And th this design goal should be reached um, via an op optimal uh, system solution, including local synergy effects and affordable renewable energy availability. And the question was, okay, um, yes, in this early design stage, how can we actually um, yeah, uh, calculate if, uh, if, the, if a specific variant can reach this design goal? Um, they needed um, some insights in the a dynamic operation of the building, including also the behavior of the cooling and heating system and the power supply system. And because of this interdisciplinary task, um, 
they asked um, us because of our simulation service portfolio, uh, can you use um, Modelica and your Modelica models um, to simulate the system and compare it to a specific uh, reference building? So we um, took in our, looked in our portfolio and we found the, the Green City Library and Simulation X. Um, which we used as basis for the implementation. It's um, a library which is dedicated to HVAC systems and power supply systems, as well as storage systems and different uh, components uh, defining the building energy consumption um, on the, uh, in different parts, for example, air conditioning, for example, power uh, consumption, but also um, the consumption of electric mobility and hydrogen um, cars. And that's why we've started in the project um, in the P2 step. So it's in the de first design stage. And we took um, a special, or we focused especially on the cooling system design. Um, the main uh, schematic of this planned cooling system, which should reach the goal of 50% CO2 reduction, is shown on this slide. Um, it was planned to, um, to put an absorption chiller as the basic cooling power uh, provider in the middle of the concept. Uh, this absorption chiller system uses heat uh, from solar collectors as, as energy source. And if solar collectors cannot uh, feed the absorption chiller, um, a district heating grid is used for um, auxiliary uh, power supply. The remaining cooling um, power peaks will, uh, would be provided by chilled water units. And uh, the concept also included two big um, uh, storage concepts to buffer the peak power um, demands. Um, which were implemented as lying um, storages in the basement of this um, greenhouse. And further renewable energy is provided by a hybrid cooler, which can provide free cooling energy uh, in colder times. So we took this schematic and implemented a Modelica model based on the Green City components. And um, we took all the sizes and the controls um, schematics from the planners and implemented in this model. And we were then able um, to simulate um, this, um, this system in combination with pre-calculated uh, consumption curves. So we could evaluate um, this uh, complex system construction in comparison to um, uh, um, yeah, a, a simpler solution, which only includes chilled water units. And this way, um, our models could um, yeah, give a good feedback to the planners that um, the goal can be reached from the uh, initial um, planning perspective. And so we had um, a, a first impact on the planning um, on, on the, on, on the, uh, yeah, on the planning uh, process. And besides the uh, evaluation of the design goal, we could also give them some significant hints how to improve their, their planning. Um, yes, um, during the whole planning process, which took around four to six years, including the construction of the building until um, the uh, uh, planning phase P9, um, there have been a lot of changes in the system. Um, one major uh, changes is shown with this uh, schematic from the final design step P9. So um, in comparison to the step P2, we had a change, especially regarding the free cooling system. In the free cooling system, a heat exchanger was introduced, uh, which separates the glycol system component from the water-driven cooling um, system um, piping. And uh, more or less, or a bit more important, were the changes of the um, of the storage systems because um, of um, some results of the simulation, um, the storage system was changed from one big lying cooling energy tank and one big lying heating energy tank to um, to two cascades with uh, five tanks standing in the basement each. And yeah, like the normal planning process, also the models will be will refined all the time. 
during each um, planning process. So we had some major refinements in the planning step P3, P5, P8, and P9, and which mainly focused on the one end that the tank design and the integration of the free cooling system. Furthermore, um, there have been some additional um, some additional requirements from the from the local utility company, which um, limits the, limited the the return temperature of the district heating system to 55 degrees Celsius, which was a major problem of, for the absorption cooling machines. So um, we had to find um, alternative solutions for that because yeah, um, the absorption cooler needs high flow temperatures with a low temperature difference as, as, as heat supply. And yeah, with that, this limit was not um, reachable. Um, and another important aspect of this model, of this final model in stage P9 was that we could implement the final control system, which was implemented in the, in the, in the real building as basis of a four years monitoring period, which started in 2018. Yeah, coming to some interesting results, I've already mentioned um, that we've done some yeah, significant analysis of the uh, cooling system, of the plant cooling system during all design stages. And I told you that there have been identified some issues with the, um, with the cooling tanks. Um, the actual problem was that um, there but the estimated or expected a very low temperature difference inside the cooling tanks because of the um, yeah of the uh, yeah construction of of the, of the tanks, and so um, together with the um, with the planners, uh, there was a decision making process in the P3 step um, to change um, the lying 10 cubic meter cold storage to five standing storages with uh, two kilometers each and with the final implementation of the p9 model and also the then implemented adapted um, control system we could show okay um, we can get um, a, a significantly better temperature difference and temperature spread inside the cooling tank um, tanks, which avoids high volume flows um, by the pumps. So our Modelica models could thus um, directly contribute to significant, significant improvements during the complete design process, which is shown for, with an example here. And um, yes, I have already mentioned to you that we've um, also been into uh, or started a, a four years monitoring campaign and the goal in, during this monitoring campaign is to um, collect a lot of uh, measurement data and to evaluate different optimization um, approaches of especially of the control system and to do that it was nice to have the uh, the, the previously developed models because uh, we can thus do some analysis um, what will be changed if uh, we change the control system to another, um, yeah, to another structure or to another algorithm. But if we want to do that, we need some reliable simulation models, and reliable simulation models need a calibration. So we use the first um, monitoring um, data coming from the from the real world building uh, in the early uh, phase of uh, phase of step P nine, and we saw okay there was um, extensive gap um, regarding the um, implemented data input data of the absorption chiller efficiency and this um, absorption chiller efficiency gap uh, mainly came from this mismatch of um, integrating the district heating grid uh, in the heat supply of the absorption chiller machine and to yeah to overcome this gap um, We've again discussed um, with the planners and the designers uh, different alternative solutions at the beginning of the P9 step, and with the main goal um, to still um, match or fit this 50% CO2 reduction goal. And um, with the calibrated models, we could then analyze four different variants, which 
helped to overcome this problem. Um, this... Excuse me, Torsten. I'll yeah. give you one more minute. Okay. But we're okay. running out of time. No worries. Okay. Uh, then I sum up a little bit. Um, at the end, we choose variant two because it was cheaper and it could fit um, the uh, the main goal of the of the main design goal. And so uh, again, the models could contribute to um, a lower investment and to uh, the, the reaching of the actual goal. And um, yeah, finally, I have to say um, this process was a very a long process with a lot of manual effort regarding data acquisition and um and and and, and model and model updates and model maintenance and so we've started in 2019 another re, um, german research project which is called fmi for bim with some local um, research institutes uh, in dresden and um, the idea of this project is to link the building information modeling with um, some ex acceptable derivatives of Modelica models, for example, um, implemented as FMUs, uh, which can then, can, can then be um, updated during each planning step and which can be yeah, um, uh, fed with data by architects, engineers, and even system manufacturers. And this is an ongoing um, research project, which we are really looking forward to because the issue of uh, manual data and model treatment is um, yeah, a, a really a, a very high uh, showstopper if you want to convert this approach into an industrial project. So we are looking for um, the results of this research project and um, would be really interested to get into discussion with you into because of the, uh, the findings and the presented results of this project. Thank you for your attention.